let's see some other data transformations as well. So now we have aggregated the data. Now let's explore some other data transformation, which is, um, let's go and explore the conditional split transformation. So again, just drag and drop, put it over here. So now you have another uh, stage added to your uh, package. Just click on the remove the flat file destination. Or oh, let's undo it. Let's click on this link, delete it. And now we have to redirect the flow from the aggregate stage to the conditional split stage. So I'm just redirecting and the output from the conditional stage, I'm redirecting to the flat file destination. Okay, so this is your data flow now. These are the four stages. So what this conditional split task is going to do, it's like a filter. So you can split your data based on some condition. So you can apply a condition and the condition that we're going to apply over here in our scenario is uh, now that we've already aggregated the data based on the job title. So we know how many employees are there for each job title. Now our requirement is to see that um, how many job titles are there which have an employee count of greater than four. So that is what is a requirement. So I'm only needing to collect the data for those job titles which have an employee count of greater than four. So I'm going to use this condition split transformation for that and it would act as a filter. I can specify my condition of the employee count being greater than four and it would only output data that satisfy that condition. So we have already have our aggregation defined. So let's go to the conditional split and define some conditions. So you can see that there's a default output name always created, which is a conditional split default output. And if I just cancel it, you can see that there is no cross mark over here, red cross mark over here, because there's already a default output uh, link that is created that uh, that outputs all the records for which any condition has not been defined. So no condition has been defined as yet. So it's a complete stage in itself. If we run this uh, job, uh, this uh, package now, then all the data would flow to the output stage. But we want to define a condition. So let's double click on it again and define a condition. So the conditions can be defined here if you had defined some variables and parameters based on which you want to define some dynamic conditions. We could have used the variables and parameters or we can simply use the columns uh, and define some condition on these columns. Now what exactly we wanted to define was all the job titles for which the employee count was greater than four. So I need to use my employee count column for that. But what is the function I need to perform? So let's just uh, put the employee count and now it has already taken an output name of case one, which you can change. So you can say, let's say employee count greater than, so it won't take that. So employee count, you can just put greater than four, something like that. You can put a meaningful output name. Then we are going to define the condition. So our condition simply is employee count greater than four. Now, if I click outside, I can see that there is a red, the, the text is still in red, so there must be some error to it. If you want to see exactly what is the error, you can just go over here, hover over here, and you will be able to see the error. The error says that the data types, and let's do an okay, so that we get an error over here. So the error says that the data types, dt underscore ui8 and dt underscore i4, the data types dt underscore ui8 and dt underscore i4 are incompatible for binary operator. So it says the operand types could not be implicitly cast into compatible types for the operation. To perform this operation, one or both operands need to be explicitly cast with the cast operator. So it's asking us to cast these, the data type of the employee count column 
to the one which can be used with the binary operator that is the greater than operator. So this DT underscore UI8, it's basically a Unicode kind of data type. It's not able to assign a binary operator of greater than to this data type. So we need to cast it to a compatible operator. Okay, so let's try to do that. Let's say okay. And casting, how can you do the casting? So if you see on this right hand top side, you can see that there's a list of functions that is available to you. All these are transformation functions which we you can use for defining your condition. So you can perform transformations on your uh, input columns or if you had variables or parameters, you can perform different kind of transformations on them and then use them to define your condition. Now, since we have been asked to cast this column, let's go and explore some typecast conditions. So let's go and click over here. Now, these are your... Uh, uh, options that are available to you so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try using the dt underscore i8 function that would convert it from unicode to i integer having eight bytes and then probably it would be able to use this function now how do we use this function you already see when you click on it you see how you have to use that function this is what you have to write so just copy that go over here paste your function And if you come out, you would see that now this has turned black. If this has turned black, that means the function has been accepted correctly. So this is how you apply function. This is the syntax in which you write. You just put your function like this, dt underscore i8 within brackets. Then you give a space. Then you give your column name or the parameter name on which you want to perform that operation. So this, this part converts it to an 8-byte integer and then you have it greater than four that is your remaining condition that you want to get now default output name is okay whatever is the default output name but the output name on which this condition has been defined is employee count greater than four okay so we have to map this output link and not this output link now what will this output link have this output link will have all the records which do not satisfy any of the conditions on any of the other output links. The other output link that we have is only this output link, employee count greater than four. So all the records basically which do not have an employee count greater than four would go to your default output link. Now what we want to map uh, is if you click on this output link, then your name of this output link is conditional with default output. We do not want to map this. So I'm going to remove this once again. Just delete. And then when you pull your output link from the conditional split to the flat file destination over here, it will ask you to choose the output link which you want to map to your destination so output link you have the two output links from your conditional split stage to choose from so you can choose the one that you want so i want the employee count greater than four and say okay now that is the link that has been mapped over here let's go back to the flight file destination make sure that everything is correct it looks correct override data in the file yes please do that so just select this mappings are looking all right so we have everything in place over here so we can just save this again and run this. So we'll complete zero errors, zero warnings, all green check marks. Everything has gone fine. You can see the number of rows, 290 rows, then 67 rows, and then you have 10 rows, which had employee count greater than four flowing to your flat file destination. Now, since we did not include a um, data viewer stage you are going to check in this and this is the information that we have you can see over here all the counts are greater than four so five fifteen fourteen nine right so our requirement has been implemented and our requirement has been achieved so we are good with this flow and let's click on this to come back to our design mode so this is how you can use this conditional split transformation 
basically works like a filter okay so it basically splits the data that comes with input stream based on different conditions you can have multiple links coming out of your conditional split so you can define uh, if you go back over here you can define another link with some other conditions so you have all that data coming uh, to that link the output link will always have the data which is not satisfied by any of the conditions on any of the other output links. So all the remaining data basically would flow to your default output link. So if you want to collect that for debugging or if that is the way you have designed your job and you want the remaining data to come and you want to perform some other transformations on that, you can collect data from this link as well. So you can attach multiple destinations to this your conditional split. So I can go ahead and let's say there's some other destination i want to put so just for the sake of it let's say oracle destination then i can i have option to redirect the other output to this and by default it has already it has um, automatically taken conditions the default output because that was the only other output link remaining for the state of flow so this is how the conditional split transformation can be used 